because the NeoVim extension and VS Code are separate entities, some things won't work. As I shown you in my last Vim video, uh, if you try to use CodeSnap with a Vim uh, selection, it won't work. However, if you select with your mouse, it will. That's because the VS Code selection and the NeoVim extension are different. So, in some cases, you'll want to make a hotkey, a Vim hotkey, that actually makes a VS Code selection, and then call some command. And I've shown you previously, uh, I've actually made this already. Boom, it works through the NeoVim, through the NeoVim selection, because First, it takes your selection, selects it in VS Code as well, and then calls the command. The NeoVim extension provides, I guess, an API to do this. And let's look at it. So, there are a few commands that you can use. I haven't found a command to just VS Code select. Each one of them is, well, either just called the command, or select something and then call a command. So I'm not sure if you can just select without calling a command. So the first one, the first thing I want to mention is that there are two variants for each one of them and you should use notify, the notify version, because notify is essentially async and call is blocking. You don't want blocking. Uh, it can cause issues. So, use Notify. First of all, the, the simplest one, just call a command, a VS Code command. So, how you use that? Um, say I'm somewhere here. Uh, you, well, usually you would right-click, copy command ID, and here you go. Now you have the command. Let's go to how that, that is actually implemented. So, let's look at this. Um, I made a hotkey to toggle sticky scroll. So I just copied the ID of the command, wrapped it in single quotes. That's important. Single, not double. So, I map and then com command meaning execute this in command mode, meaning in normal mode. Well, essentially, uh, command is the same thing as this, however, a bit better. So it's recommended to use that. Then you call the function VS Code Notify, provide that, and then CR, meaning, con uh, meaning enter. So you called that function, and press enter to execute it. Uh, so yeah, it's essentially that simple for a single command that doesn't require a selection. However, some do, for example, the code snap extension and some other things. They actually took care of a bunch of them so say I select something and then use the command palette. This is at least supposed to be VS Code highlighted or VS Code selected now. The extension actually does that. However, uh, if you're making remaps, that's not going to be true. So VS Code notify range. Once again, we call a command, but before we call it, we make a line-wise selection. So full lines or capital V in Vim, uh, the starting line and the ending line. We'll get back to leave selection in a bit. So I don't think I have that yet, but essentially. Uh, let's actually write something like that. So visual remap uh, 
say this, for example. We do command call VS Code notify range, but not position. Uh, then you specify your command. Okay, what do we need? Uh, so it's easier for me. <laughs> cool. By the way, I showed this off in one of my videos that you're gonna get a link to. <laughs> I keep trying to pause and it, sometimes it doesn't work. Hold on. All right, let's get back. So uh, now what do we need? Line one, basically where the selection starts. How do we do that? Well, I'm sorry to scare you, but we're gonna read <laughs> Vim Docs. Yes, seriously. There's this useful function that lets you get the number of the line you're at, or essentially get the number of the line, which is exactly what we need for this. We need line one and line two. Okay, so if you specify a dot, it's the line which is in the cursor's position. Um, so my cursor is here and it would return 71. All right, and V is the opposite of that, but it only works for visual mode, which is what you're gonna use most likely. Uh, v means the start of the selection. I started I started here, so it would still specify 71. Uh, and my cursor is here. So by using the dot, we would get 69. Nice. Cool, so now we get this line and this line. And let's just write this in. If it would work. Okay, so uh, line where we start is the end of the selection because we end at the, at the zip, <laughs> because we end at the position of, of the cursor. Then we do line and this. And while we use single quotes in calling our function, now when we are in the parameters of that function, for whatever reason, now we need to use double quotes. <sighs> Vim script, am I right? Yeah, so okay, so that's where we started and that's where, where we end. We get the lines, cool. The last parameter is leave selection. Basically means leave the VS Code selection after executing the command. And I set it to 1 because if it's 0, I've seen it be... I've seen it break things. Essentially, try out both and see what makes more sense for the situation. I'm going to leave it 1 there. Okay, but I showed you a selection that wasn't a line-wise selection. Matter of fact, it was just a normal selection. And I didn't select the whole lines, and maybe I don't want to. Well, how do we get this kind of selection? Which is symbol by symbol. There's a thing for that too. Maybe you have noticed already. So, it's VS Code Notify Range Position. Actually, visual, huh? What is this? Pro pro uh, produce line wise. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Interesting. Okay, so you can use this command to select something without previously selecting it in Vim and then doing something. However, I haven't used it before. Uh, these three are what you should look out for. So, range 
position. We used just range, now we have position as well. Now what we have to specify is the starting uh, position of the column, so of the cursor, which would be here. Let's go a bit left so it's not the same column. So we need to get this as the start and this as the end. Uh, and leaf selection is the same thing. As far as I'm aware, these three dots are for other parameters sent to the VS Code command. However, once again, I haven't used that before. And for most things, you won't need to. Just so you know what it's for. Okay. Uh, and I already used range position in my code snap fix. Now, instead of line, we use the call for column method or function. It works the same way as line, but it returns the column instead, giving us the exact position that we actually want. V for the column, that's where the selection has started, and dot for the column of the cursor, which is also the end of the selection. And we keep the VS Code selection after running the command. Here we go. That's literally it. That's how I fixed code snap for NeoVib, which was one of the remaining issues I had with NeoVib. Now I don't have any issues and I think it's just better than the Vim extension. All right, so you can use this kind of idea. Essentially, once you write this uh, for your every following remap that needs to use a VS Code uh, selection and then a command, the only thing you really need to change is this. This will stay exactly the same. This maybe will change, but it shouldn't matter that much. Um, in VS Code Notify, the only thing you change is the command, and I don't use range and that. Okay, so that's how you use these commands that the extension provides us. Now, a couple of ideas of what you can do. First of all, NeoVim has, or just Vim, lets you create a fold. So it has all the folding hotkeys with that in mind. However, you can't fuck around with folds as freely in VS Code as you can in Vim. So instead of using the Vim commands, which don't work for folding, I actually call VS Code commands. So there's toggle fold, fold all, unfold all, go to parent fold, which I've noticed being incredibly useful. Let me show this off. And actually, no, let's go to clean input box. Uh, so I'm here, right? At the start of the line. I want to go to the definition of the whole class. I press ZP to go to the parent fold section. So this, and then ZP again, and I'm here. And those are considered jumps. So even better. Cool. And I implemented that onto a command or hotkey or however you call them. Uh, that is kind of useless. By the way, how to check if a hotkey is used or not? Use H and then just type it in. I personally prefer doing the same thing in the terminal because it's going to be faster. Um, but it's up to you. So. Oh, and also you have to consider that you likely won't be jumped to where you want to. Okay, so ZP. What does that do? 
Okay, like P. Uh huh. Kinda specific. I kinda don't care that much, essentially. But maybe you do. So, when you want to make a remap, always do colon, H, space, and then what you want. To get there and see whether you should or shouldn't use that. Cool. However, I like this more because it jumps you to that. Uh, it's faster. Maybe not as pretty. Or, no, I would say actually the opposite. It's more pretty. Anyway, there's go to next fold and previous fold, which, if you didn't know, uh, are amazing VS Code commands. So, um, I think that's all of them. Uh, the only negative of the command is the fact that it considers the same level of faults. So this is the first level and this is, this is the second level. And until I go to an upper level, it won't go on um, any more down. So I press ZJ to go to the next folding section, but it doesn't because there are none uh, other folding sections of the same level. But then I can use ZP to go to the parent fold and then I can continue. So that's useful. Uh, I use a typewriter extension that essentially um, makes sure that the cursor is in the middle of the screen. I made that. Essentially, any command that you feel like would work best in the Vim model type thing here you go. Now you can implement a map for it, or a remap, that's probably a better solution. And here you go, you can use it. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe, and don't be scared, I'm not becoming a full-time Vim YouTuber. I'm still mostly AHK, but I love Vim and NeoVim. So there will be quite a bit uh, more content about it. So thank you for watching and goodbye.